Hello there Virgos, welcome to your October 2016 tarot reading. So, this is a very, very uh, career focused month for many of you. Um, I feel like what I'm getting is that, um, you know, when you were a child, for example, and a lot of you, you have very, very vivid memories of, you know, childhood, okay? You, you retain information and you have a very... Uh, it's like you're like an elephant you don't forget um i feel like uh you know especially early in childhood and throughout your life you have a, a very certain like a clear sense of direction when it comes to life trajectory when it comes to your specifically your career track um you have certain things that you immediately want to do you know as a career to pursue you have an eye you always have an idea of what like um of the types of job that can bring you a lot of financial st stability, a lot of security, and things like that, okay? So I feel like the career thing was never a major problem for a lot of you. And I feel like at this point, and sometime for this month, I feel like many of you are rethinking your career path, are rethinking your purpose, you know, on the professional front. What was really making you quite happy in the past? You're thinking about wanting more. You're thinking about changing a career path. You're thinking about forging a new path for yourself. I do feel a lot of people are contemplating, you know, uh, going out looking for work and not being able with the options that are made available because, you know, they, they fit you like 70, 80 percent and uh, a deep part of you knows that there has to be something out there that fits me 100 percent. So I feel like as a result, you might be reverting to self-employment, for example. You might be thinking about like, um, you know, forging a new path for yourself, trailblazing, starting a, um, starting your own self-employment type of gig uh, or do, working in a con on a contract basis where you have a little bit more flexibility or working in an environment where you have, uh, are more like dealing with more clients, for example. Um, and I mentioned this a few months ago, I feel, I think it might have been July, where you actually have a lot of skills, but I feel like a lot of you might be lacking in confidence, okay? You're an earth sign, and earth signs uh, tend to be a little bit more like, um, I would say like a little bit more humble and a little bit more reserved when it comes to um, bragging about your skills and bragging about, you know, what you're bringing to the table. I feel a lot of you are very, very competent. And um, as a result, whatever you do, you take your sweet time doing it. And you know because of it, you've thought about every angle. And it's going to pan out well. But you might be lacking in the confidence to start it or the initiative. The, the um, you know, the first of all, the boldness. You have the ambition and you have the, the technical skills. But you're lacking in the confidence to do something new. So I feel like it boils down to a confidence issue, Okay. Um, and I feel that if you're uh, dealing with this, I definitely feel that it's going to, it's going to pan out well for you. If you shift from, you know, uh, paid employment to like doing something, um, possibly self-employed. What I'm also feeling is that because of it, a lot of you might be reassessing a uh, contract, like a signed document. This can pertain to like, a um, a document regarding, you know, like a relationship, like a marriage contract, a housing contract where you're living together, or some type of contract. But um, I feel like more so it pertains to either a work contract that you're in right now. You're trying to find a way to either break it up so that you can move to another place to work, or you're trying to figure out like logistically where do you want to be so that you you can be happier and you see yourself, you know, there long term, like 20, 30 years down the line. So you're not just looking for, you know, an okay job. You're looking for the perfect fit. And, you know, of course, everybody wants that perfect fit. But I feel like you have settled in the past for, for mediocre jobs because you felt like maybe that's all I'm allowed. Maybe, you know, no one has like 100% job satisfaction, but I feel like that perfect opportunity is out there. Maybe it doesn't exist yet. Maybe you need to conjure it up and, you know, create it for yourself. So, you know, maybe you need to manifest it, create something out of nothing. So I feel like, you know, that's a lot of pressure and I feel because of that, you might be hesitant, okay? Okay. For others of you, I definitely feel like a crossroads. 
I feel um, when it comes to career and when it comes to like a major relationship in your life, significant relationship in your life, okay? So let me see here. We've got one last advice card. Okay, so let's go into your reading. Um, see if there's anything else that I'm picking up before we go into this spread here. Um, I feel that, you know, financially you're in a good position right now. So so that's why you have a little bit more leeway when it comes to, you know, I, I'm financially secure. I'm just not happy with the job. So I want like a, the, the job that not only pays the bill, but that is like a really good fit for me um, where I can stay there and retire. So I feel like you're a lot of you are in the, the mid-career, you know, senior position where you're looking for more emotional fulfillment from your job rather than just, you know, um, financial uh, security. So let's go into this reading here. You've got some very, very good cards. So first of all, we have the Four of Cups as well as the Wheel of Fortune. Now let's talk about the Four of Cups first as it pertains to uh, relationships and love and interpersonal relationships because um, I'm gearing towards that, that, that um, energy, okay? Um, so the Four of Cups is a situation where we are given a lot of options. Like I said, these options are not like the top cream of the crop choices that you're choosing amongst. Otherwise, you would already be jumping on it, right? So it also um, uh, denotes to me that this is kind of like dreaming for the undefinable, longing for the undefinable, wanting, wanting this one thing. And uh, you've got, like, you were given these things, and you're trying to figure out, how do I make this into this, okay? So one of the dangers associated with this card is um, you're sitting there, and you're thinking about it, but you, there's no action. You're ruminating, and um, you want this ideal thing, but you're not taking the actions in order to get it. And you're it, it's so undefinable, and it's so, like high up there in the ethers that it might not be realistic okay but either way like I said I feel like you're you're longing for a specific situation to come through but you're not really doing anything or going out there to get it okay for those of you who are thinking about this in a work environment I feel like there is a sense of boredom with your job a lot of you are kind of like bored out of your mind with your job and you want something else um, like I said I feel like you know, financially, you're in a good space, so you're not complaining, but you feel like, is is this it? Is that this, like, all there is to this work environment? I've learned everything. I'm already, you know, maxed out on, on um, the knowledge here. I'm not growing anymore as an individual, as a worker, as an employee in this company. I need something more. I want to expand my mind. I want to expand my imagination. So I feel like you're kind of bored with the job environment and you want to figure out, you know, what else is there to do, okay? It's linked up with the Wheel of Fortune, which basically means whatever you ask for, you're going to get. So, um... One of the, w the reasons why I feel like a lot of uh, earth signs, specifically like Virgos, you give it your all. You are very perfectionistic at everything that you do. Whatever you do, you make sure it's to the best of your capabilities before you hand it in. And that type of mentality means, you know, giving it your all, even though you might not feel it, even though you might not be completely happy and you might be bored to death. But whatever you do, you do your job really well. And, you know, the universe will reward you accordingly because I feel like whatever this idea is that you are really trying to pin down, you're going to have an opportunity this month to some finalize uh, some plans. You might even be coming across people who might serve as mentors to you in order to like realize this dream, realize this idyllic situation so that you can at least, you know, capture it and bring it down to earth and start to create it and start to build it. I hope that makes sense. So, there is some serendipity at work here with the Wheel of Fortune uh, when it shows up, okay? This is basically things spinning in your favor. Whatever you have been trying to manifest, I do feel this is the month in which you're getting some type of special um, insights or some type of technical knowledge, some type of... Um, I feel like favorable circumstances are coming through that will allow you 
or allow this situation to come together okay and uh, I'm gonna talk about love in your love spread in a little bit um, I feel like this is more career focus so let's just keep track on this and um, I do feel they're saying to you a lot of inspiration coming from foreign people okay and I usually when they say foreign they mean you know foreigners people from a different cultural background I do see that's the case but for others of you I feel like people from a very very different background from what you're used to so for example different socioeconomic class different station in life they had to they, they had like you know um, I'm sensing a lot of them might come it so let, let's just say if you have come from a an impoverished background you might deal with people who are you know very very wealthy um, and they're bringing in a different worldview a different point of view a different perspective for you to reconsider and as a result you're gonna get some very special insight some pr uh, private information that will really help you realize this dream or at least you know be able to pinpoint it down um, pinpoint it and for others of you who are in a very, very wealthy environment where you grew up in a very wealthy household, I feel like you might be dealing with people who are um, might come from an impoverished background, so they have a different perspective. So those are the messages specifically that I'm hearing, okay? So there's something here about um, getting a different perspective, getting ideas, great inspiration from people who are from a different station in life than you. Um, the next set of cards deals with your finances and um, first of all we have the Ten of Pentacles as well as the Three of Cups. So let's talk about this situation as a financial situation first. The Ten of Pentacles is a situation that deals with like a very very happy, solid, stable home environment. Um, there's a lot of like, um, for some of you, you might be in a home environment where you might have a mortgage and um, you might be buying a home, you might be celebrating, like getting a home, you might be in a position right now where money is coming through very, very nicely, you're stably employed and you're thinking about getting a home, purchasing a home, or even doing some type of renovation in your home environment. I do see um, housing situations and especially like housewarming coming through very, very strongly, okay? For others of you, this is a, a very, very good uh, card that indicates some type of investment opportunities. Putting money in your IRA and putting, um, you know, like investing in stock, investing in bonds, um, investing your money somewhere or having somebody manage it for you so that it can grow. Uh, what I'm also getting is family dynamics, you know, the household that you live in, the people that you live with. There's going to be some changes, some shifts, some celebrations associated with those around you. So this is a very, very good card that indicates, you know, the apex of the financial security. Okay, so the this is the like the, the top of the... Um, pentacle suit so it indicates stability all around and on top of that you're an earth sign so I definitely feel a lot of abundance a lot of joy a lot of security is happening for you in your home environment and in your work environment in your financial life as well so overall very very good card um, we also have the Three of Cups, and the Three of Cups indicates some type of a reunion, some type of party, some type of a celebration between very, very close knit people. Okay, there are three women in this card, uh, in this card, in this deck, as opposed to like you know the two women, one man in the Rider Waite deck. So I definitely feel a lot of celebrations, gatherings, and um, uh, celebrating somebody's um, major milestone, possibly housewarming, like I said. Um, there's going to be opportunities to have very, very deep emotional conversations and um, I sense like coming together with another person that you have, you know, that, that makes you feel good, that understands you on a very, very innate level. And I do feel it might be like same sex. So if you're a female, it might be another female that you are, are you know, have a really good relationship with. If you're a man, um, it might be another man like a, that you have a very good relationship with. This is a card about friendship, socializing, social dating, and all of these things, okay? What's coming through next here is the Princess of uh, Pentacles. So... The Princess of Pentacles usually denotes some type of uh, financial news coming through as it pertains to um, an air sign. So let's 
look at the situation. So the air signs are Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. There's somebody coming in, uh, that might be an air sign, very, very, very fast and swift. This is somebody that travels from far away. They are a little bit aggressive. They're a little bit kind of rough around the edges, diamond in the rough. Very, very intelligent, um, tends to jump to conclusion, but, you know, not a, a bad energy. Um, I do feel there's money coming through with this person. There's some financial news. There might be some ideas for income generating projects that you both can do together as a unit. So I definitely feel an air sign that's going to be figuring prominently in your life. Okay. For others of you who are dealing with this person as a family, uh, a person in your family, like especially if they're younger than you, I do sense that there's going to be some money dished out for children. Okay. If they are going to school, you are going to have to somehow amp up your spending in order to cater to them and in order to accommodate them. So I feel a very, very heavy air sign energy that is um, surrounding your home environment and also surrounding your work environment. That's going to bring a lot of inspiration for you. They're presenting a point of view that um, you might not have um, that you might not have considered before. So there's going to be a lot of communication back and forth between you and this person. For others of you overall, there might be another earth sign in your environment, someone who is very, they like to tinker with things, they like to take things apart, they like to learn, they're very, very curious. Could be uh, an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, another person that you're dealing with, and there is a rapid communication um, between you and them. I do see a little bit of distance, a little bit of like a physical estrangement or physical distance between you and them. Um, so if you're dealing with that earth sign, there might be some type of communication, some type of travel that they're going to have to do. And I feel that, you know, once again, you both are kind of like doing your own thing and then coming back together. So I feel like there's distance associated with it, but there's always constant communication back and forth. So you're not worried. You're off doing your own thing. They're off doing their own thing. Um, if this is an earth sign, like I said, they like to tinker with things. They're very innovative. They're very... Um, they're always busy. They have like many, many talents. They like to learn new things. And they're just a very, very curious person. They have a very strong systematic mind, but also highly creative. Okay. So both of these energies look very, very good. And I do sense like a lot of, um, I, I feel like for a lot of you, um, if it's an air sign or even an earth sign, there's this sense of like having a very long history together, meaning that, you know, you both have traveled through life and your, your cross have path, um, I'm sorry, your, your paths have crossed. Uh, many, many times. So you weave in and out of each other's lives, but you always come back together. So this is a really beautiful energy. I feel like someone is coming through, giving you a lot of inspiration. Um, but they're like here today, gone tomorrow, but then your past will always cross um, in the future or you know it, it has done that in the past, in the present, and also it will again in the future. So it's somebody quite significant for you. I'm seeing somebody who's very, very like courageous, daring, uh, unorthodox, and possibly, you know, speaks many languages, um, well-traveled as well. Um, what's coming through as well? We do have the Five of Wands as well as the Two of Cups. Now, the Two of Cups is, um, this is a very strong soulmate connection. This is the card that indicates to me having affinity with another person, okay? So affinity basically means that um, you both have the same goals, you both have the same ideals. And uh, when you talk, the other person understands automatically what you mean. So then you don't have to over explain yourself. So that's what affinity means. And um, this can also indicate like some type of a soul connection as well, where, you know, when the other person talks, you automatically can feel what they're going through. So some people call that sympathy, empathy, but I feel like it's on a soul level. The Two of Cups usually shows up astrologically as like, let's just say, if you're a Virgo sun, the other person might have a Virgo moon. So automatically, you understand one another and you spark off one another in a way where you, you support the other person emotionally, they vice versa will support you emotionally, and you feel really, really good with the other person, okay? Um... With this combination, so the Two of Cups, you have somebody like this in your midst 
that gives you a lot of emotional support, that gives you a lot of love, a lot of affection. And um, I feel like it's somebody that you, you feel a very strong pull towards, okay? Um, as it relates to the Five of Wands, the Five of Wands indicates conflict. It indicates um, working at cross purposes with one another. So I feel like you are trying your best to make this situation work out, and you might be different on different paths. So even though you have that affinity where you understand one another in a very strong level, I do feel that you know the way that you do things on a mundane level, on a uh, routine level, or you know long-term goals, long-term planning, you might be very, very different. So I feel like you're dealing with someone who has a very creative streak. So especially for those um, very orthodox Virgos that are, um, that are watching this, you're dealing with someone who might be an Earth sign but they're very non-conventional or you're dealing with an air sign Aquarius Gemini and Libra who is very unorthodox you know they they like come in like the wind they they rush through your life and um, you have a lot in common there's that you know sense of intellectual connection very very strong sense of history that you have with one another but you don't see eye to eyes you don't do things the same way and you might be working at cross purposes with one another and overall, I feel like um, there might be some events that are triggered within this relationship here with this Wheel of Fortune and then the Two of Cups that will allow you to, um, to have to like be courageous, be brave, and really assert yourself in a manner where, you know, if something is valuable, if something is dear to you, you're going to have to defend your beliefs, you're going to have to battle it, it out, and you're going to have to defend your case, okay, which is not something that's hard for you to do because you're very articulate, but I feel like you might shy away from conflict, and this is the month in which you know what, you're going to have to explain yourself and you're going to have to defend your stance and explain to other people why you feel the way that you feel, okay? What's coming through in terms of your advice here? We have the Nine of Wands, which is a card about, you know, um, that last leg of the struggle. The Nine is, you know, almost like at the end, okay? This is kind of like taking a break from a uh, tenuous situation in order to fight another day. So it's basically saying the struggle is not over. You've got one last push. Um, so push yourself just a little bit harder. And I don't like saying that for Virgos because you do, you constantly push yourself. But I feel like the don't rest on your laurels. The rest of it, it it's not over just yet. You still have one last leg of the journey left to go and you need to push through. Okay. So I feel for some of you, um, there might be some situations where you might have a conflict with another person. There's some type of a ruling, some type of deliberation, and you feel like, oh, I've got this in the bag. But I, I, I feel like something is going to be backtracked. You have to revisit that situation again, and then you're going to have you know, to make your case once more. Okay, So don't rest on your laurels. You're going to be called at the last minute in order to do something. Um, present your case and things will work out really, really, really well for you. What I'm also feeling with this card here is um, this usually shows up when I feel that somebody is thinking about somebody from the past that has been very problematic, usually an ex, usually an ex. Um, so let, let's just say that you know, you're trying to make your new relationship work. For example, you're trying to make your new relationship work and there's like a, a jealous ex or like a meddlesome ex that likes to stir up trouble. I feel that. And um, I feel that you're kind of like on the lookout, you know. You're trying to defend your domain, defend the person that you're with. And there's like a, a person in from the past that has a habit of like, coming in at inopportune times to mess up your new relationship. So I do sense for a few of you, that might be the energy where you're kind of weary about somebody from the past and you're keeping guard so that they're not coming through, okay? So you're kind of uh, taking a little bit of a defensive stance when it comes to that past energy. A lot of you might be dealing with a fire sign, a... Um, Leo, Sagittarius, or an Aries. I'm going to go into your love reading in a little bit, but that's the energy that I get usually when I see this card. 
Um, what's also linked up here is the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords indicates a situation in which you're doing something a little bit sneaky, and I do feel this is your energy. You're doing something that is not outright illegal, because I, I don't feel you would do that. And what I'm seeing here is the Seven of Swords is a sneaky card. It's you're kind of like on the lookout for some uh, against somebody. So you're doing something in your own interest. But I don't feel it's sneaky in a way where, you know, you're hurting anybody. You're doing something that might be considered, you know, non-traditional. Um, this can be, you know, trying to get away with something and what, whatever it is. I feel like it is very minor because what's coming through, um, as I was saying, sorry, it's surrounded by the Nine of Wands and the Nine of Cups. And the Nine's energy indicates to me some type of... Um, um, I do sense protection. You have two people that are kind of like on the lookout for you so that you can do this. So it seems to me like this is not anything shady, anything that's illegal, that there might have been some type of a consensus established here that yes, procedurally, this might not be the way to go, but they've got your back. It seems like that to me. So I feel like two other people in your life are facilitating um, a process or something in order to allow you to do something that you feel might not be completely kosher. Okay, so that's what I'm sensing here. It's a actually very interesting um, layout here. So the Seven of Swords, let's just talk about this. The Seven of Swords indicates, you know, once again, lying, cheating, deception. Um, in this situation, it's kind of like sneaky behavior, okay? So as I've already explained it, you're doing something a little bit sneaky, a little bit unorthodox, but I do sense that you have people protecting you, watching your back, and making sure you're not caught, okay? So whatever that means, however that plays out, it could just be uh, doing something and having lookout, having people like um, covering your tracks, all right? So I, I do sense you have protection here. Um, as it pertains to like communication and other people overall, be very, very careful about everything that you hear because I feel like you're naturally very skeptical, so I'm not worried about that. But I do sense that like you might be giving somebody too much of the benefit of the doubt or you might like not call them out when they are doing something they're not supposed to. So I feel like, you know, don't try to smooth things over. Have that conversation. Really try to defend yourself. Don't shy away from conflict. If someone's doing something to you and they feel like they've gotten away with it, that's what I'm sensing. They've gotten away with it and you're just like, no, I know exactly what you're doing, but I'm trying to maintain the peace. So I'm not trying to cause a storm. I feel that it is really important to call them out on, on it. Okay. So so that they don't, they feel like they've gotten away with it. So just be careful about that. We also have here the Nine of Cups as well. The Nine of Cups is a wish card. This is a really, really good card that indicates emotional satisfaction and emotional stability as well. Okay. So I feel like for some of you, um, there is a situation that you're going to be very triumphant over. You're going to achieve something. Um, of your heart's desire. So if we started out here with the four of cups, which basically means like longing for a situation to come to fruition. And I feel by the end of the month, it is going to come to fruition because you've spent the whole month working very hard at it and strategizing, planning, and figuring out what's the most efficient way for me to get from point A to point B in the shortest amount of time and, you know, in the most fruitful manner. So I definitely see some, some long cherished wish for this month coming through that's going to provide a lot of satisfaction for you okay i do feel big parties like a big congratulation a big monumental like um you know so a party for your sake okay so people might be toasting you for example that's coming through as well i see a lot of outdoor events that are set up so possibly even an engagement um marriages for some of you i do feel that as well okay I do see a lot of dress fitting as well, like uh, bridesmaid dresses for those of you who are getting married or at least, you know, re um, rehearsals, recitals and things like that. Let's go into your love reading, um, Virgo. So let's see what's in store for you guys. So can you show me what is in store for Virgos for love, romance and relationships for the month of October 2016?
of Romance Relationships, Virgo, for October I'm going to need a lot of clarifiers here with this spread. It's um, the energy is all over the place. And I feel like it might be um, like two completely different groups that I'm reading this for. So there is the tower here. So I'm going to look at the situation in a little bit. Um, I'm going to pull out another card. Sorry. And we have two characters here. I'm going to pull out another card as well. So the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Coins. Okay, so if I need further clarifications, I'm going to pull out more, okay? Just so you know that I'm actually having, I'm, I'm struggling with this, mainly because uh, the energies are very, very uh, contrasting and they're very positive but very uh, much in contrast with one another so give me a second I'm going to light a candle here okay so first of all uh, let's talk about the past because that's gonna provide a little bit of context for you so that you know where you stand okay and if this if this applies to you it's gonna pertain to something from your past we have the Page of Wands as well as the Ten of Coins. And um, the Page of Wands usually indicates some very, very good news that is coming through as it pertains to like projects, work, and I feel that it's providing a lot of financial stability for you, okay? Um, based on this information, and I'm trying to keep this as, you know, a purely romantic love reading, the Page of Wands indicates that you're getting commu constant communication, constant effort from another person that wants to build a future with you. So I feel for a lot of you, you are in stable relationship as we head into this month. And you know, um, I know that with a lot of Virgos, you stay in a relationship for a very long period of time. So I feel like most of the time, you're going to be in a relationship. So that that's just, you know, the way, the odds. So I feel a lot of you might be in a situation from the past where you had a family together, you built up a lot of wealth together, you had, you know, you were married, you had property, you had assets, and you were working together as a unit in order to make things work. A lot of you might have been involved in this situation from the past with a fire sign, a Leo, a Sagittarius, or an Aries. And uh, for this month, because of this situation, you might be hearing, uh, getting communication as it pertains to finances, okay? So there might be some financial, uh, financial reshuffling um, coming through as a request of this fire sign that's... Um, a, that's like reaching out to you. A lot of you might have moved on with another person. There's a fire sign coming back in with news communication, and that's really going to change the direction of things to come, okay? Which brings us to the present situation. So if you have an ex that's a fire sign, um, and then you have already moved on with another person that's very that's a little bit more compatible with you. I feel you're you're getting communication from the fire sign, and I feel like you're waving them goodbye. You're just like no no no, I'm done with that chapter of my life. I've got somebody else, but I feel like they might be soliciting you. They might be trying to get wedge themselves in between your relationship. So be careful about that. Um, which brings us to the present situation here. 
the present situation is the three of wands as well as the ace of coins. Now the ace of coins as it pertains to a relationship is basically given a relate um, you are given a relationship that has a lot of potential. The ace of coin is if you think of it it's, it's like a, a seed like a flower. You nurture it and it's going to grow and it's going to be really really beautiful. It's something new right? It has a lot of potential and if you don't nurture it it's just going to um, grow, wilt and then die. So what you decide to do with it is really up to you but you're given this opportunity uh, because the universe is telling you um, here's what you really need and you know give this a try. So I feel like you have a new relationship. A lot of you are starting a new relationship and you're in a very good position now. You need to nurture it. Okay, whatever relationship that you find yourself in, give it a try, nurture it. And um, a lot of the times, you know, like um, we have a tendency like this. We have a new person coming through and we're just al already like um, um, figure, like we're, we're trying to like figure out like what is this going to look like five, ten years down the line? Well, it's a new relationship, so you need to, you know, give it the benefit of the doubt, give it your all, and don't be too skeptical. Don't jump the gun, don't overanalyze, and don't, you know, project so far in advance, right? You you need to just, if you like the, the person, if you feel like you're both compatible, if you feel like they're a really, really sweet person, just give them the chance. I feel like that's what's happening here, and I feel honestly for a lot of you, as well, um, you might have a karmic relationship from the past where, you know, you spent a lot of years with that person. And I feel like they have been trying to meddle in your relationships. And every time, you know, you move on, you, you have another person before that relationship even has the potential to grow. The other person, the p person from the past reaches out and I feel like you come running back. But this is the time where I feel like you have something that you know it's going to work out and you're waving goodbye to that past relationship and you're moving on, okay? So the Ace of Pentacles, the seed that you need to nurture, that you need to allow to flourish, okay? is linked up here with the Three of Wands. And the Three of Wands is basically waiting for a situation um, to, to flourish, waiting for a situation to really come together. Um, the Page of Wands is basically um, doing all the prereq, like, preliminary work necessary in order to start on a brand new venture on a brand new journey um, the only thing that I feel is you're putting in a lot of work and you you are very very you know diligent workers when it comes to relationships as well and you're waiting for the other person to reciprocate basically so you have already made your feelings known to a specific person and you're waiting for them to reciprocate you're waiting to like you know, to, to get the green light from them and to, to figure some things out, like what's the next step. And you're waiting on their decision. That's what I'm sensing. Um, the foundation here indicates what you know to be true. It's like the, the condition on which this whole situation is built, okay? We have some very, very strong cards here. You have, first of all, let's talk about the Ten of Cups. This is an emotional bliss card. You're in a situation where you are very, very, very happy. Um, you're feeling like, you know, on top of the world. You're, you're, you have great, like, emotional rapport with another person. And a lot of you, I feel like you've met somebody that makes you really, really excited and very, very happy. For a lot of you, this person might be very different from your usual type, okay? They're like nothing. Um like no one that you've ever dated from the past okay for a lot of you you might be dealing with an air sign an Aquarius a Gemini or a Libra this is somebody who's very unconventional a little bit quirky um, but I do sense that you know there there's great compatibility between the two of you so going back to what I mentioned earlier with the two of cups it indicates you know um, like that that sense of like um, empathy, sympathy, you have the same ideals, you have the same vision, but I feel like you might want different things in life, but you, this person makes you really happy, there might be, you know, uh, the potential for the relationship to really take off here with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Uh, what's linked up here is the tower, and I pulled out the, the tower um, to... I pulled out another card to clarify the tower. The tower basically indicates some type of, so another group of you might be dealing with a situation where you are possibly thinking about changing homes. 
um, switching location and things like that. And for others of you, you might have left a relationship where you were married, where you had joint assets, you had a lot of things built up over time. And now you're just like, you know what? I am, we're going to have to sign those divorce papers. We're going to have to consult a lawyer. A lot of you might also be leaving a long standing rooted relationship with an air sign, an Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, and you're dividing up your assets. And I do feel that there's that energy coming through where I see something physically within your home structure, either the family structure, the family unit, or the housing structure being broken down because you're no longer uh, living together or you no longer want to live together. Okay? So there's a lot of energies happening for different Virgos here. The crowning energy is something that you're thinking about, the person that you're thinking about, for example. Um, first of all, we have two characters that are heavily, heavily in the cards, okay? So we have the Knight of Coins. So if you're thinking about somebody, it can't really be you, right? So I'm reading this as two other people. We have the Knight of Coins, which is an Earth sign, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. And we have the Knight of Swords, which is a, oh, an Air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. I do feel a lot of you might be in a relationship with another, um, with one of these two people. Okay, and the earth sign looks like there's a lot of compatibility overall. This person is very, very slow to act. They're on a major, major new junction in their life. They're trying to decide. So they're very, very slow to act. They might be a little bit frustrating um, to, to deal with. And I feel like you might be the one to have to nudge them in the right direction. You might have to provide a lot of support emotionally or lay down some type of blueprint guidelines or some type of a um, um, guide map, like a, a guide map for them to follow. That's what I'm sensing. Um, I feel like I feel like you're more the mentor and the, the person that gives them inspiration in this relationship. So I feel like you have a lot to offer them. And if you think about it, they might not have enough to offer you. Okay, so they're kind of like, um, there's a lot of hand-holding. I, I don't feel it's a codependent relationship. But I feel like there's a lot of nudging that you're doing to get them to move in the right direction. I hope that makes sense. So that's if you're dealing with an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. If you're dealing with an air sign, this person is a little bit flaky, okay? So I feel like they they tend to jump to conclusions. They might feel as if they know everything, not in a bad way. It's just the way they, that they come across. They may be a little bit brash, impulsive. Um, there might be little lies here and there that comes through with them. And they might not have all the information before they jump to conclusions. So I, I feel like that's not something that you're comfortable with. So so you're thinking about this person. And I feel like they they keep contacting you. <laughs> I feel like they keep contacting you. Okay, so Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. And um, every time there is like a calm, stable period in your life, I feel like out of the blue, they come charging in and they kind of... Um, uh, destabilize you so that that's what I feel coming through with this energy okay and um, I pulled out a card just to see like what's going on why are they both showing up okay and just to see what's um, the clarifier card we have the Empress um, the Empress is so this is still what you're thinking about the Empress is somebody who rules her house who rules her or his domain who is basically in charge of everything, okay? So I feel like a lot of you might already be in a situation where you're playing the role of the mother, the nurturer, the caretaker, and um, a lot of people, the, the, the lovers that you're dealing with, um, I feel like you're the one that is providing the voice of reason, for them so that basically means to me like you take on the the role of the caretaker in your current relationship okay so if even if you're a guy and you're dealing with a girl they might not um if, if you're dating women uh if you're a man and you're dating women you're um putting you're like you're 
you're doing the role of the the caretaker, the provider, the person that provides like a lot of stability in the relationship. You put a lot of yourself in. Make sure the other person reciprocates. And likewise, if you're women, I feel like it's really really important not to um, patronize or um, you know take care of your um, relationship partner in that way. You you want to detach a little bit, okay? Because I feel like they're highly independent. And um, they need to figure things out for themselves, okay? So it's not good to dump so much in. Just make sure you're being, uh, your efforts are being reciprocated, okay? Um, a lot of you are thinking, you know, you, you have like a family. You, you might want to take a relationship to the next level. You might have somebody in your life already that you're very, very comfortable with. And there might be a lot of... Um, changes happening around your environment so you're just like maybe I should tie the knot um, just to stabilize things just so that there's a little bit more certainty coming into our lives so I definitely feel a lot of discussions with another person that you're in a very serious relationship with and um, I do feel like um, issues when it comes to parenting as well if you're in a committed relationship I do see issues of parenting um, otherwise, if you're single, you have somebody new in your midst that has a lot of potential. I do feel air signs and um, earth signs, okay, that has a lot of potential. And based on this, I feel like if you're grappling between an air sign or an earth sign, you might want to go with that earth sign with this ace of coins here. It indicates like a new seed that has the potential to grow. It might take some time, you know, like... Um, flowers don't bloom or don't sprout overnight so you're gonna have to nurture it and it can um, be the relationship that is very very good for you okay so having said that what's coming through in your future position here we have the hermit and the hermit this is your card and um, this is a card about examining a situation a lot of the times it indicates research it indicates like um, looking through information on social media. I don't feel that it's a stalking energy. I don't sense that. But it's more like finding out information, digging a little bit deeper, looking at who you're dealing with. And um, also, you know, trusting that what you see is not what you get. So don't jump to conclusion, okay? So I feel if you're dealing with an air sign... I'm feeling very, very strongly if you're dealing with an air sign. Um, an air sign or an earth sign, I do sense there's an element here about somebody juggling two people. It could be you juggling, you know, an air sign and an earth sign. Or it could be one of them juggling multiple options. I do feel that if you were in a relationship with someone from the past, you have tried to move on, they've tried to move on, but they're still reaching out to you and they might be in a relationship with another person. They're reaching out to you, but they're in another relationship. So I definitely feel that element uh, at work here. Um, I feel like you are also um, involved with somebody significant, you know, that you're exclusively dating. They're going through some financial situation in their lives. They're trying to decide what to do. They're, they need a lot of expertise and advice from you. So you're stepping up and you're giving them somewhat of like practical and also spiritual advice so that they can continue on a new path in their lives. Okay, so you're, you're like in a role where you're taking care of a lot of other people this month. You're also um, giving them a lot of advice. You're trying to figure things out for yourself, what you need to do financially. So I, I feel like the relationship aspect, a lot of you might already be in a relationship. And for those of you who are um, out there and looking, um, you have some options coming through air sign and earth sign. But I feel like your financial situation is one of the main focus for right now in terms of what do I want to do with my career? You know, where am I headed and things like that. That's pretty much occupying your mind at this point, okay? So, uh, sorry for the lack of direction, but I feel like a lot of things are happening for you guys for this month. And um, I feel like you might have been heavily, heavily affected 
by that Mercury in retrograde um, period that just ended on the 22nd. So a lot of like re-examinations are coming through, exes coming back in, a lot of new discoveries being made about potential partners and, you know, change in work, change in housing, change in a new direction. So this is the month for you to sort out all of these things in your life. So I feel like it's playing out across not only your professional life but also your love life there are a lot of major decisions that need to be made so I feel like a lot of you are dealing with you know some type of like damage control or some type of cleanup that you need to do in your love sector okay the only thing I can say for sure here is um, if you got an ex that's a fire sign that has tried to interfere with your relationships in the past um, that situation you are turning your back on it which is great Okay, I feel like you've got some meddlesome pa um, uh, exes. Okay, so uh, do not let in the future. Maybe that's just an important lesson here. I feel like don't let the um, the ex ruin the new relationship, and don't compare. Don't compare um, the ex to you know the new person. Okay, so and so was like this. Every time we date, we're dealing with new energies, new people. And with the Ace of Coins here, it basically means that the universe is giving you something that you might not want, but it's going to be something very good for you that you need to take the time to adequately nurture, okay? So don't be too critical of it. Um, invest the time in it, and it's going to surprise you, all right? I do wish you the best, Virgos. Um, take care of yourself. If you like a private reading with me, uh, please visit my website where all the information regarding, you know, pricing, scheduling, and all of that, uh, booking appointments, payments, all of that is automated. It's online on my website in the description box below. I also have a donation link. If you found this reading helpful and you'd like to use that link, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, take care of yourself. I'll be back for the mid-month reading. Bye-bye.